Ladies and gentlemen of the Tread Gaming Tech Home video, we finally have some what seems to be at least concrete information on the Xbox 720, also known as Durango's final specifications. While these aren't exactly 100% officially confirmed, it does seem to be the case. Now, if you've not already done so, I'd recommend you check out my previous video, which goes into the Orbis. And it basically, you know, goes over just how good the system's going to be. And it goes over a lot of the technology that's actually shared between both systems. Nevertheless, a lot of this is also going to be covered in this. So, anyway, um, first things first is the CPU for this system still seems to be the next generation of AMD cores, um, which is also known as Jaguar. It's eight cores and running at a fairly decent 1.6 gigahertz. The idea, just to go over it one more time, for those of you who missed the previous video, is to have a mobile platform CPU for the purposes of low heat and low power usage, as well as high performance. These will typically be used on the things such as tablets, uh, lower laptop level devices, or that type of thing. You will be seeing a lot of computing power in this, however, so don't worry too much about it. In my previous video, I mentioned that there seems to be a large disconnect between how the PlayStation 4 and Xbox 720 have chosen to lay out their memory, and it seems to be the case that I was right in my previous um, video. The Xbox 720 is using 8 gigabytes of DDR3. This is completely different to the PlayStation 4's design, which is using 4 gigabytes of DDR5, which is obviously far faster memory. And with this, you also have got 32 megabytes. This is for the Xbox 720, which is dubbed as ES RAM, which is extremely fast RAM connected directly to the GPU. So consider it to be almost like a frame buffer of sorts, I suppose. These memories operate in parallel, and as for the overall bandwidth, it's not 100% confirmed yet, but it's leaked at 170 gigabytes per second, and that seems a fairly plausible number. The really interesting thing about this is, you might remember the Xbox 360 had 10 megabytes of ED RAM. This was basically connected directly to the graphics core and once again acted as a frame buffer. This is not the case with Durango. Instead, it's actually hooked up to also the North Bridge, which is, for those of you who are not that familiar with it, it basically acts as an interconnect between all major internal components, for example, the CPU and so on. This provides you with, well, what is effectively a fairly reasonably good chunk of memory um, that's accessible to many different components. As a quick, as a quick, I'm sorry, aside, the North Bridge is genuinely connected to things such as HDMI, um, the actual CPU, of course, the GPU, as well as the actual memory. While the South Bridge is for other little bits and bobs such as USB three. Um, controllers, uh, Ethernet, that type of thing. So I'm sure many of you have also heard about the fact that AMD are going to be providing the graphics cards for both Durango and Orbis and it seems to be definitely confirmed at least on this one. In my previous video I did mention that on face value from the specifications we've had leaked around the internet that the PlayStation 4 had what seemed at least at face value to be a slightly better graphic solution and this seems somewhat confirmed with these leaks now i'm going to give a, a very brief analysis of what this is the card for the orbis was basically a 7970 mobile obviously the mobile version was simply to reduce the power usage and also heat and with that system it was basically clocked somewhat down from the mobile version down to only 800, uh, 800, I'm sorry, megahertz rather than 850, and it's also only got 18 or uh, GCNs, also known as AMD's graphics core next. Uh, graphics core next. I'm sorry, I don't know what the hell it is with me today. Compute units. Things, however, differ a little bit with Durango. It appears that the Durango actually only features 12 of these units running at the same clock speed as what the PlayStation's one does. So, according to this, we're going to be looking at about 1.2 teraflops of power offered by Durango, 
On the other hand, the PlayStation 4, also known as Orbis of course, is going to be a little bit higher to say the least. It's going to be about 1.84 teraflops. Now, in my previous video I did mention about, um, well, mysterious hardware accelerators that seems to be a part of the devices. Now, in this case, we do have a little bit of information. Not all of them are covered, however. I'm going to start off with the one that we have very little information about, and then we'll move on to the others. And that would be called the Data Move Engines. We have absolutely no idea what the heck they are. Um, it's a very interesting name, to say the least. One of them is also for audio, which basically also includes echo cancellation technology for the Kinect. And another one appears to be Accelerated Relay. Hardware Video Encoder, which appears to, to be a HDMI input, not an output, part of the design. So in theory, at least, you could record, say, TV shows and so forth. Now, you may remember that Microsoft have made a big deal about, you know, the Xbox uh, system being a big part of the living room. They want it to be more than just a games playing device, and it seems that they're really going ahead and doing that as in this particular piece of hardware, if this leak is true. The USB ports seem to be 3.0 standard, which is a significant bump from the 2.0. Basically, 3.0 allows you to move a, a lot more data through the bus than the 2.1, the 2.0 ever did, and is great for connecting, say, external hard drives, um, that type of idea. Also, it appears that the Connect it has its own connection, in, uh, its own input which is very interesting to say the least. It's a very different decision to what they went ahead and done last time. However, if you read between the lines, it also suggests that the sensor itself will remain separate from the console. However, you may remember that the Xbox 360's version of Kinect did have some issues, mostly, predominantly at least, to do with the USB ports. But what about the rest of the system? What actually ties this whole thing together? Well, apparently, there's going to be a hard drive included um, at the unit. Now, I've actually been very critical in the past to do with the fact that the Xbox 360 didn't have a hard drive as standard on launch. And this was a very bad decision, in my opinion, on Microsoft's part. I've also mentioned once or twice in my previous videos that I didn't like the fact that I had to buy a core unit on launch because I did buy the system literally upon launch. And you might remember that the system was very limited upon launch, which is understandable. I don't have a particularly big problem with that. But one issue with that was that basically, um, because they decided to go ahead and make the core system, um, and obviously even the premiums at the That's time me. of launch were fairly small drives actually, they were only 20 About gigabyte hard drives. Really it basically meant that installing games um, couldn't be, be really a, a major requirement for most, uh, off, well, makers yeah. of the games. They just couldn't do it because obviously they want to appeal to as many as much of the audience as possible. This also meant that the Xbox Live marketplace was slower uptake because Microsoft actually went ahead and put a, a limit on how big the games could be, which is fairly small. I believe it was like 50 megabytes or something upon launch. I don't remember the exact number offhand. And of course, the other problem with the Xbox 360, other than the RRO, day was a simple one other than not enough memory which I've mentioned up teen amounts of times previously in my videos I won't go into that but what I will mention is the DVD drive now it seems the Microsoft have somewhat learned from these lessons of being basically spanked by quite a lot of tech resource places to be honest with you I'm not the only one by any means it's been uh, verbal about this this time it seems that we're going to be seeing a six speed blu-ray drive apparently this supports up to 50 gigabytes of dual layer disc which is better than you know what it could be and to be honest with you uh, the hard drive I'm still not 100% happy with apparently it's 500 gigs minimum I would have preferred, given the prices of drives, I'd preferred to have seen one terabyte or 750 gigabytes. Why? Simply because I think that more and more people are going to want to start downloading games and also 1080p footage just absolutely destroys hard drive space. It really does. Um, especially, obviously, as you get into the higher bit rates and so on. As for networking, 
It does appear to have a Wi-Fi built into it and Wi-Fi direct support also. Um, obviously that was another issue with the Xbox 360 upon launch. It did not have any Wi-Fi built in, which meant that you had to go ahead and buy a connector if your, if your uh, 360 was, say, a couple of rooms away. Obviously you could have laid an Ethernet cable, but let's face it, most people don't want to go through that level of hassle. So they just went ahead and coughed up for the unit. Fortunately, there is also an Ethernet port, it seems, on the 720. So, for those of you who have your router close to the 720, it's still a very good idea to connect it by Ethernet for obvious reasons. One final thing for you guys to remember is that these specifications are apparently around 9 months old. Now at that age, considering how long it actually takes for you to manufacture a console, there's a good chance that none of the stuff would have changed. However, there was still a possibility that some of it had. In other words, there is a possibility that Microsoft said, hey, you know what, we don't believe that you guys, <coughs> I'm sorry, that you guys, um, well, we just think that basically we need a better graphics card. And, you know, they might have added more um, processing units to their system. Or they might have said, hey, you know what, since it's only got, you know, 12 cores, yes, we'll, you know, bump up the speed to, say, 850. Now, remember, this is DirectX 11.1 as well. So, who the heck knows how true this is all going to be? As I mentioned in a previous video, it does seem that the actual, well, operating system for this darn thing is pretty darn big. It appears, um, from all reports so far, to be around 3 gigabytes. So that would explain the drastically increased amount of memory for the Durango as opposed to, say, the PlayStation 4 Orbis. But it also means that even if you take into account the fact that the PlayStation 4 has 4 gigs of RAM, uh, with 512 apparently being dedicated to the operating system, this thing has apparently, as I've previously mentioned, 8 gigabytes of RAM. 3 gigabytes is apparently being given to the operating system. So even so, the Durango is quite ahead when it comes to actual overall memory, um, despite the fact that the RAM is going to be slower. So it actually really depends eventually on what happens. It could well be that the Durango is going to be a more memory um, intensive console simply because of the overheads of the operating system and the connect and everything else, and because of the fact that it's so media um, designed. Or it could be not that. It could be that indeed the, the specifications are a little bit wrong. They're outdated and they've used basically the same design in terms of memory and sorry, in terms of a graphics systems as the PlayStation 4 Orbis. It's too early to really tell. But regardless, there's of course going to be a lot of speculation between both camps. One thing is for certain and that is that if the PlayStation 4 does appear to be more ahead, it could be that Microsoft had just said, hey, you know what, we might want to go more the Nintendo route this generation. We want to try and make a system that's going to appeal to more people, that's going to sit in more people's living rooms. The other way to look at it as well is, generally speaking, most developers, for example, Electronic Arts and Konami and so forth, will want to put games out on all of the systems. This is particularly true for those that sell the best. And why? Because they make more money. In other words, let's say, for example, and I use this as a pure example, let's say that you were to create a game, and let's say that you knew that the Xbox 720 was significantly worse in terms of specification. I'm not saying it is, I'm just saying, you know, as a hypothesis, I imagine it was. Well, let's say it was, I don't know, 25% worse in terms of graphical capability, okay? The fact of the matter is, you're still going to try to release your game on that, okay? You might have slow, slightly lower resolution textures in certain areas, you might have slightly worse polygonal models, you might even have, say, less, less uh, physics, if so needed, because of the fact that your CPU is being tied up by more things. But the, re the result is you're still going to have the games, and a lot of people aren't that fast, they just want to play the games. And so it's really up in the air of how Microsoft want to try and go ahead. Last time, of course, they tried to go with the most powerful system, uh, with the Xbox uh, 360, and it kind of was. The Xbox 360 graphics card was slightly better than the PS3's, actually. 
Um, and this is one of the reasons that, for the most part, the 360 versions of games do look slightly better. I'm not saying they look amazingly better, but they generally do look a little bit more vivid um, in terms of the overall color saturation. And they generally look a little bit sharper. And in some cases, at least, they actually also run with a slightly higher internal resolution before, of course, it's upscaled to whatever you decide to output, either 720p or 1080p, depending upon your television. And, of course, the previous generation, that was be the original Xbox and PS2 and the GameCube. Well, we all know that that was very different. The Xbox One was significantly faster than the PS2. And, indeed, the PS2 was the slowest out of all of them. But, let's face it, the PS2 also battered all of them quite handily in terms of pure sales. And, indeed, the PS2 is just now being phased out. Um, so that, that gives you an indication of just how successful that machine is. In other words, pure raw power does not give you a final indicator of just how good the system is. Nor does it give you a good indicator because these specifications are not finalised. I'm actually hoping that there isn't so much of a difference in terms of raw graphics between the 720 and the PS4. I'm hoping that Microsoft have increased their shader, ca uh, shader count somewhat. But who the heck knows? Anyway, I will be signing off. And no doubt Microsoft and Sony are going to continue this little war over the next couple of, uh, well, months at least until one of them finally crumbles and makes an announcement, which will be amazing. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the controllers and everything else of these devices look like. Anyway, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. I will see you soon. Take care of yourselves and bye for now.